On Thursday morning, it was revealed that Jamie Clausen had been found. How many heard that news? I guess everybody. It was kind of shocking as I was, first of all, meditating on the Gospels and thinking about the baptism of the Lord. And as I saw that news, I first heard about it Friday morning at breakfast with the that man is you guys at uh, Leo's restaurant. And uh, the following day on Saturday, I caught up with some of the news to see some of the details that were being poured out about that. And I started to think to myself about uh, the importance of baptism. But in the particular case of the Clausen story, the very fact that on October 15th that she was abducted. Um, abducted, it, it's a Latin word that means to lead away. She was led away from what was familiar to her. And for three months, they were searching for her, almost three months. And I don't know about you, but <clears throat> to be very honest, through Christmas season and through the uh, Advent season and coming into January now, I had almost all but forgotten about the case. And so, of course, the news that she had been found was surprising because most of the time in investigations like this, uh, as time wears on, the scope and the distance that she could have been away from the place where she was abducted begins to grow. And eventually it turned into an international search, and even the FBI had held that particular case as number one priority in the entire country for a number of weeks. And of course, as time wore on, hope began to be lost. And I was thinking that especially today in the context of the baptism, especially of the Lord today, because we're reminded of some very specific things. Of course, it pauses, it gave me pause to reflect on my own baptism. Now, most of us don't remember that well, we were baptized because we were baptized as infants. But we were given some very specific graces in that particular event that was more than just symbolic. It was more than just uh, something that we were went to the church to do. Um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says very specifically that there are five things that you get when you're baptized. First of all, the forgiveness of sins, original and personal. New life as an adopted son or daughter of God. Membership in the body of the Christ and made in the body of Christ and made the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You become a member of the church, the church from the very beginning, and a sharer in the priesthood of Christ. Now, this is not to say the priesthood is a ministerial priest as I am, uh, but you have access through your prayers and through your baptism to God the Father for intercession for your families and to make sacrifices for yourself and for them. And I was thinking about the Clausen case and the reality of how often times that we are led away from our baptism. We're led away from our identity. In some sense, the world abducts us from our baptism. It leads us away from our identity as sons and daughters of God. And in the vacuum of that space, friends, we end up grabbing onto other identities. We grab onto other identities. You know, the big question today is how do you identify yourself? And the gamut of those possibilities is obviously running beyond the borders of rationality. And so the baptism of the Lord today affords us, just as all those FBI members, those Barron County sheriffs, just as, in a sense, all the king's horses and all the king's men went to find something that was lost in a desperate search. And how many of us maybe even right now, or maybe our entire lives, especially when we're young, search for an identity? Who are we? Society would like to define us, oftentimes, in our, even some of our friends and family, our church. Society would like to define us by our sins. Society would like to define us by our worst moments in our life. And the reality is, friends, your primary identity is your primary identity, which is your adoptive nature as sons and daughters of God in baptism. Today I want to just talk about three of those offices that you were given in baptism in addition to those other things that I had mentioned. I had mentioned the priest. The first time, and this could be very frustrating to a lot of people's ears, and God knows that when I was in your position before I'd gone through seminary and even through seminary, I'd really misunderstood this. 
that when we talk about the baptized priesthood of the faithful, that it's not the ministerial priesthood. The priest is conformed in a particular way to speak in the words of Christ, to use his anointed hands with chrism in order to confer grace of the forgiveness, especially in reconciliation, and the conferral of the Holy Spirit on the Eucharistic species to make them the body and blood of Christ. No lay member of the faithful can do that. No one is worthy of that. We are simply chosen. And that brings us to our next point. The prophet, priest, prophet, and king, you were baptized. The prophecy part is not the part where you can tell the future. It's a particular gift. In the Old Testament, a prophet was just called the nabi, the nabi in plural. It just meant simply that you were called. You were called to fulfill a specific mission for God. And as baptized members of the faithful, you too are called to share in a mission with God. And it doesn't have to be significant. Again, partially the reason why we adopt so many identities that aren't us is because we find maybe the identity as a son and daughter of God boring. We wonder what that mission actually entails because the world offers us tons of missions. Make enough money, get enough honor, get enough pleasure, give enough power. And oftentimes we wrap our identities around those particular things which in the eyes of God are nice, but in all in all in eternity they become meaningless. So you are called in your own particular circumstances in life to follow the grace of God to fulfill the mission that God has for you. And the last thing you were given was royalty. That's where the king part comes in. You were given the royal nature of God. A channel, when your head was anointed with chrism, a channel was opened up to God in order for grace to flow in. And that channel is indeed frustrated by sin, especially mortal sin where that channel has been cut off. And it does affect your life, and most people don't realize that, but it does. So you have this royal nature of God. And the royal nature of God means to live as God did. And how did God live? Well, he lived perfectly in Christ, and that's what we're called to, to live more in the example of the Lord. But more than just an example, friends, to be grafted into his very life. How do we get in touch with our baptism? Well, two things. The gospel tells us, one, that Jesus was baptized, and then it says he was praying. Unless you pray and ask God to help you remember your identity as adopted son and daughter of God, you will, by default, absorb another identity. And very often times, your life, as it says in the gospel, the opposite happens when you get fire and living into your baptismal identity. To not live into your baptismal identity means that you lose the fire for your faith. How many people need more fire for their faith? Everyone, everyone. But where is that fire found? It's found rooted in your identity. In your identity as a baptized Catholic Christian and reaffirmed every time you receive the Eucharist here. Don't be led away by other identities and you will find the fire. After Jesus is baptized, he goes to pray and when he prays, it's then that there is something open to him in heaven. The Father saying, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. The image that God bears in Jesus Christ is human nature. And every one of us bear that same image. And the whole purpose of Jesus' coming was that so we could be grafted onto him and presented before God the Father as beloved sons and daughters. That's the whole point of this whole thing. It's the whole reason Jesus came, to make us acceptable to God the Father. I want to leave you with this quote today because I I heard it this week, and I'm sure that many of you have probably heard it before. It's from John Paul II. And I think it gets at the struggle for identity very well. And he sent this to youth uh, several years ago. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us. 
and our real capacity to become the image of his son, Jesus. Our real capacity to become the image of his son, Jesus. Friends, today on the baptism of the Lord, I want you to try a little exercise. And if you really want, after 10 o'clock Mass, you can come back. We'll be having a baptism. I want you to just think back, because you probably don't remember your baptism. I want you to just think about what happened on that day. Imagine yourself again as a child, as a little baby, if you were infant ba baptized as an infant. And I want you to imagine, first, the priest you know, making the sign of the cross. And as a catechumen, anointing your chest with oil, with the oil of catechumens. And then having water poured over your forehead and over your head. Unless you are immersed, you could immerse yourself, I suppose. And that purification of the water washed away all of your original sins and opened that channel to God. And following that, you were anointed with chrism on the top of your head. As I mentioned before, opening that channel to God with the same chrism that priest's hands are anointed, with the same chrism that those are being confirmed will be anointed by the bishop in a few weeks. And imagine that. Imagine then being put on that white garment that you were given. Imagine then being given that candle, that light of Christ, that you were asked by your parents to help you to bring uh, burned and undimmed into the light of eternal life. If you've got some time today, think about that. Think about what you were grafted into. Think about what you were incorporated into. And always live into that identity as you, that you have as a child of God. If you're looking for the fire of faith, friends, that's where it is. Because once you know your identity, you never have to fear your failures or your shortcomings because you will know who you are. And the world will not take that from you.